Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Oh, I haven't sat down and filmed in like two weeks. Everything you've been seeing that's been going up has been filmed like weeks ago. <laughs> Some of it is pretty old content, uh, at least last month, and it's just stuff I've had in the pipeline because I had some technical difficulties, got a new camera and phone situation, had to sort that out, had to wait for a patch, all that kind of fun stuff. So uh, yeah, I couldn't really film sitting down because I had some focus issues, but we are sorting out all that. Everything's looking good so far. In this video, we're just going to talk about what's going on, man. What's going on in our lives? Uh, what we've been doing to kill time during this quarantine situation, or our lockdown anyway, and about being scared and all that. We, we will uh, touch on it, but I also don't want to just touch on that. I want to talk about some funny things and some happier things, so we kind of bounce around. I bitch a little bit about AT&T because I hate going to the AT&T store. <laughs> so you get to listen to me fuss about trivial nonsense because it's a nice distraction, right? And I also announced my new series of what we're going to be doing on the channel once a week at least. At least every two weeks we're going to have some kind of declutter clean out video going on until I get my house in order. And I think it's a timely <laughs> time to do that even though I already had that on the books. Like months ago to do. I just was waiting till I had some free time and well now we all got a lot of free time don't we? Not that my schedules necessarily changed that much because I work from home. <laughs> it was it's a good distraction anyway and keeping my mind off of a lot of shitty stuff. <laughs> we just sit down and play with some new makeup products because I did acquire a, quite a few new things pre-lockdown that I've just been saving to play with so we do that today and just chit chat and play in some makeup. If you want to see how I got this look and listen to me ramble, go ahead and keep on watching. But before you do, please like and subscribe, comment down below, tell me how you are hanging in there. Let me know some self-care things you might be doing, just how you holding up, and if you need someone to talk to, to not feel alone, whatever, I'm here. My DMs are always open on Instagram, Twitter, wherever. Feel free. You can always just reach out and say, hey, what's up? Or can I vent for a minute? Whatever. I'm here. Just know you are, you are so not alone right now. I think we are all kind of in the same boat. Some of us are worse off than others. Let's go ahead and just get into this makeup and chit chat business. And Okay, you'll notice that I do not have brows on. Yeah, I know. We are going to use a new brow product today. This is the uh, Maybelline Tattoo Studio brow pomade. Yeah, we're gonna use the new, uh, well, this isn't new, but it's new to me. I know this has been out quite some time, but we're gonna test it out and see how it does in my brows because I love a good pomade and I needed a new one and I just wanted one from the drugstore. Didn't want to fool with uh, ordering one online. I bought a lot of this stuff pre-quarantine uh, <laughs> and lockdown, so that's why I I've got some things to play with and I've just been kind of holding on to them, playing with them here and there, but I haven't actually used any of them on camera. I haven't filmed a makeup video in like two weeks. I don't know what to do with myself. I've like forgotten how to do this. Other things are going on before we jump in this. I have new hair. I'm also filming with a new camera setup. We're kind of in a learning curve a little bit. Lighting might be a little different. Things look a little weird. I'm still playing settings, learning how to use it. So there's that. So I'm just going to take the pomade, this is the shade brown. I wish it had a shade on here. It doesn't actually say the shade, it just has a number. But I think it was like soft brown or something. I'm gonna use it on my little Morphe M153. It's just a little angled eyebrow brush, it's kind of thin. So I'm just gonna start kind of in the middle here. Pull it over. I think the color's maybe a hair warm, but it looks good. I think I'll adjust it with some eyeshadow. But so far it's going on pretty good. It's kind of, it's not as pigmented as some of the higher end ones I've used. I've previously been using the Locket one from Kat Von D because I got it in PR a while back and I'm just still working through it. But it's finally starting to dry out on me and I really like the shade of the medium or, I don't know, it was one of the brown ones I liked a lot. It was deep enough for me, but not too dark. I like a darker brow. Even if my hair is light like it is now, I still like a dark or bold brow. So I'm just gonna try to build this up a little and kind of do some little hair like strokes if I can. I'm not good at that. Yeah okay that looks pretty good I think. I'll clean it up in a minute with some concealer. That's just the tail done. I'm gonna kind of flick whatever's left on the brush here through the rest and kind of pull it in. So the brows are pretty not groomed right now so we're just gonna go with it and whatever shape takes form. But yeah, I haven't filmed in a couple of weeks. A because I was waiting for my new phone and camera situation to get Sorted out, then I had to wait for an update for the camera because it needed a patch apparently because it wouldn't autofocus. It was very annoying. It's the uh, Samsung S20 Ultra. Very expensive. For it's not to work, <laughs> I was so mad. I almost returned it, but the quarantine happened and my state's on lockdown, so I couldn't return it. <laughs> But thankfully I looked up and they were planning on patching. So I was like, okay, we'll just be patient. We'll wait for the patch. It patched, 
things are great. It's working beautifully now. It's not overly smoothing the skin like it was. Originally I looked like I was made of Play-Doh because it was like smoothing skin so much and even if you had all the beauty filters turned off it was not turning it off. And the autofocus was so terrible that it just would not stay in focus, like on a face. Like you could film like little products and stuff like that and it would do okay. It was still frustrating, but like to get it to focus on a face moving, forget it. But so far I've not having any trouble with it now that it updated. But I mean, my gosh, I am so sick of products and games and stuff coming out and not being finished. Like what is up with that? Come on, like Bethesda does that shit and EA and just expect people to patch it and mod it themselves or put the patches out later. That's what beta testing's for. Make sure your shit works. It makes me so mad because you, you spend all this money on something and then it doesn't work. But thankfully Samsung did get the update out pretty fast. Otherwise, the phone is freaking fantastic. It is an amazing phone. Like any of the S20, are fantastic. My husband got just the uh, the step below mine. It's really good. It's got an amazing camera too. So if you want to save a little bit of money and not worry about having like the 8k footage and all stuff like I'm filming an 8k right now. <laughs> but uh, if you don't want to fool with all of that and you just want a really good phone if you use a camera otherwise and just want one for some nice shots here and there. I definitely go with one of the lower tiered ones. I decided to get this instead of a computer. <laughs> so I was like, mm, I can get more use out of this. And I got a good trade-in deal. So because I had the unlimited data or something already, I got trade-in bonus or something like that where I got where like a, a credit went on my bills to my note. So my film bill didn't go up. It's the same as I was paying before with my other phone because I just do the monthly installments. It worked out pretty well. I did get a little snippy at AT&T though because they would not stop trying to push the internet on me. I don't want AT&T internet. I've had before. I hated it. I understand you have fiber optic in my neighborhood now. When we had AT&T internet, they pre-sold us on saying we had fiber optic when we didn't. I know we have it now because they drilled through our sewage line when they installed it, which they paid to fix. But, like, stop pushing it on me. My internet is fantastic through Suddenlink now. I just had a new... Everything got upgraded outside after the storm and everything got fried from the lightning strike because it actually struck our uh cable lines is what happened but anyway when he come and saw the modem he made sure everything was like brand new he did the speed test everything was like top notch so i'm like i don't need your at t in it i kept telling him dude i'm set i am set like almost had to get ugly because they this one guy just would not fucking stop he was making me so mad i almost walked out of the store just because he wouldn't listen to me telling him no i'm good i get you have to do the sales bit sales pitch but I said no. I'm not here for that. I'm here for a phone and you're about to lose a commission completely if you don't shut the fuck up <laughs> and just sell me the phone. Like, I, I understand how retail works. I know you have to do this. But even the manager was standing right there and he's like, dude, they don't want it. Leave them alone. Like, he was telling the guy to stop and just let it go. He's like, they're not here for this. It's no big deal. Quit badgering them. Because it was getting, like, aggressive. Like, he was asking me way too many questions. He was getting, like, almost invasive with his questions he was asking me, and it was very uncomfortable. <laughs> like, I really, I almost walked out. It hadn't been for the guy that was actually helping us. This guy wasn't even the one selling us the phone. That's the thing. Or, like, the employee helping us. It was a, just a dude in the store that worked there. I'm like, go help another customer and leave me alone. It's like, because he saw that I was, like, just adamantly no. He was just, ooh, I'm gonna fight you. Is what he was wanting to do. And I'm like, that is not how you make a sale. And he literally just would not stop. He finally like fucked off for a little bit and then he would come back and he started asking me more questions like what do you do for a living this and that but it wasn't like small talk it was like he was trying to get information to use against me almost. He's like oh you do YouTube well you need this internet. I'm like dude no I don't. <laughs> I'm not stupid. Like I understand how tech works. I know my stuff's good. Leave me alone. <laughs> I've upgraded everything in the house to the highest it can be. Quit trying to sell me you damn fiber optic internet I already have it through another company it was not that it's like direct tv they, they were like pushing that like crazy i hate going to the at&t store so much because of that because it takes so long because of all these sales pitches i'm like just give me the phone that i'm here for let's do the trade let's get this over with that part takes long enough i don't have time for that it's literally i told them like we are because this is before all the lockdown stuff of course and uh it was the day before my friend's wedding. I'm like, I've got errands to run. i got stuff to do. Can we get a move on? It was basically saying, I was like, I don't I have time to sit here and fuck around about arguing with you about your internet. Okay? Like, I was meeting somebody for lunch and all this stuff. Made me laced. Ugh. Okay. Brow pomade looks nice. This is great for blonde head. Uh, people with blonde hair, definitely. The sh put on the screen the actual shade I have because... 
Hell if I know what it actually is. It's just a number on the back. But this one little spot wasn't wanting to stick, so I'm going to fill it in with a little bit of eyeshadow and probably adjust the color a little bit because I do want just a hair deeper, so I'll probably go with eyeshadow or something and do that. So I just kind of touched up the uh, brow color a little bit with, with my brow pencil. This is a Wet n Wild one in the shade Dark Brown, I believe. Yeah, I just kind of did that to add a little depth in there because the color is just a little light, so I kind of, I'm still toying around with the, the setup here. So if things look different, like when I come back, it's settings and stuff still a little bit, and you know how that goes. Okay, so I've primed my eyes, cleaned up the brows with my Milani Conceal and Perfect Concealer, as I like to do. We're ready for some eyeshadow. It's nice just to sit down and play with an eyeshadow and not really think about everything right now. It's just kind of <sighs> and bitch about normal boring stuff trivial stuff like going to the AT&T store and how annoying that is because it's just a <laughs> A bit of normalcy that we don't have right now. Like, I don't know if I even want to, like, talk about it that much today. I'm just kind of, like, just want a mental break at this point. That's also kind of why I wasn't filming a little bit in there, too. It's because I just didn't, didn't want to get into it. Because it's everywhere right now. We know what's going on. We need just to turn our brains off a little bit and play in makeup. All I can say is stay the fuck at home. Stop going out unless you absolutely have to. But just to kind of address what's going on in my neck of the woods here in central Louisiana, it's getting scary. We all know New Orleans is Coming quite a little epicenter. Hot spot, I think they're calling it. Uh, before I get into the rest of that, we're gonna start on eyes. I'm using the Naked Cherry, which I have not used before, aside from playing around with it a little bit. Just got my hands on this one from my friend Chandra who bought the vault and she was nice enough to let me borrow it. That's something to play with <laughs> during all this. So that's what we're going to be playing with today. Just never got my hands on this one. Kind of just, eh, I don't need it. Talk myself out of it, one of those palettes. But it's nice to play with it and so far I've been enjoying it the little bit I have used it. Now that I've had that many opportunities to use it thus far. What I'm going to do first is take Hot Spot, oh, ironically, which is what New Orleans is right now, a Hot Spot. I'm just gonna run that through the brow bone. I don't want to sound like I'm being too flippant about these things and uh what's the word insensitive because I'm not believe me I'm totally living in fear at this moment. Cannot stop watching the news, checking Facebook, my local news channels, Facebook page for updates, that kind of thing. Just obsessively. And I feel like if I sit down and film, I'll stay off social media a little bit. Quit obsessively checking the news. Give our mind a little break. I do still want to kind of talk about what's going on here. I think we have 25 cases and one death in my parish. Parish is like a county. <laughs> For people that aren't familiar with Louisiana, we call them parishes rather than counties. I don't know why. We're the only state that does that. Yeah, I'm just highlighting the brow bone, by the way. But yeah, New Orleans is kind of out of control with the uh, growth of it. Louisiana, in fact, as a whole is out of control with growth. Uh, I think we've surpassed the world in the quickest growth in just our state. Go us. Never in the news for anything good, are we? Except for like LSU doing something good every now and then. Otherwise, we are just always either natural disaster or something like this. So, yeah, even though this is quite unprecedented and scary, very historic <laughs> moment. But yeah, we had two cases pop up though at a facility that cares for people with special needs. So that's really heartbreaking. From what I've heard, the patients are doing okay. They've got them in isolation. No one else has been infected yet. Um, but yeah, New Orleans, it, the first case was traced right back to Mardi Gras Day. Exactly, two weeks. So we're thinking, or what the state thinks is that Mardi Gras was the culprit in everything and the spread. Because there's so many people from all over the world come from Mardi Gras. We have a major, like, port in New Orleans where all the cruise ships come in. A lot of people fly in to get on cruise ships there to go to the Caribbean and so I mean it's a huge port of entry for the world and it's also just a pretty big population even though it's not big like New York. New York, I, that's heartbreaking too, New York. Because they have it's so many people there. Like obviously our population is maybe not even a quarter of what they have. I'm speaking on a per capita basis about variability between the two. I think we as a state are up there with uh, like New Jersey or New York per capita with the growth rate and we do have a lot of remote testing sites that just got set up. We have one in my town and a lot of people are getting tested so I'm expecting to see numbers rise because we're doing so much more testing in our state. So of course it's going to go up and honestly I think it's probably been here in the area because there's just so many other respiratory illnesses going around that were kind of not the flu and they were different and behaved like COVID, but they don't, can't call them that because they don't know, you know, kind of thing. Like, I was, from personal experience, you guys remember around Mardi Gras sick I was. Like, sick. Okay, let's move on to some eyeshadow real quick. <laughs> I'm gonna take Juicy Peachy Shade. Like, 
I had a terrible respiratory issue, negative for the flu, but had flu-like symptoms. I didn't run a high fever, but I was... I just now stopped coughing from that. <laughs> like, it was bad. Very sick. I don't remember the last time I was that sick. My husband in the same way. He was incredibly sick about two weeks before I got sick. And so I'm <laughs> pretty sure we might have already had it. He did actually get a positive flu test for one type of flu after his other sickness because he had a terrible respiratory infection first then got regular flu. And like he was coughing up blood sick. It was terrifying. Like I didn't go into a lot of detail about all that on here, but yeah. <laughs> now that we're talking about that kind of stuff, that was what we were dealing with in January. Like from December, January time and February, I got incredibly sick. I'm not somebody who gets sick very often. So that was something and like beyond a mild cold, I, but I was in bed, dead to the world, sick. You guys could hear it in my voice when I did film, even though I was saying I felt better. You could tell there was some respiratory issues going on. <laughs> it was pretty, pretty rough. I'm not convinced that it hasn't been here for months and it hasn't been just gotten diagnosed because there was no test, nobody was testing for it because they didn't think it was that big a deal yet. Because that was at the time when people were thinking, oh, it's just the flu. Yeah. Uh, I had a bad feeling about it from the beginning. I knew this when the flu. This is truly a nightmare for me come true. Like this kind of disaster scenario is the thing I have nightmares about. It's why I don't like zombie movies. I don't like any kind of disaster movie because it's so uncontrollable and just it brings almost a level of cosmic fear. I, I don't know how to process it. It scares me so bad. And that's kind of where I am now. I'm almost like in like, this doesn't even feel like real life. Like, is this really happening? still feels that way. It doesn't feel real. It doesn't feel real. Even though I'm trying to adjust to this new normal of social distancing, quarantine, not seeing my friends, just talking through text. I did see one friend the other day because she dropped off some toilet paper because that's been a whole nother ball game of just trying to get damn toilet paper in my town. We went to five stores the other day. None. And she happened to find some at the Dollar General and brought us a big pack, which they should have been rationing that way sooner because people went freaking crazy over some goddamn toilet paper. Like... <sighs> I, I don't understand the, that. I'm pretty sure that started as a meme and people took it serious. Like, I feel like we're being trolled about the toilet paper. And I'm just building up juice. And I'm not going to talk a whole lot about products. I'm just on a tear right now. I'm going to take a smaller brush here. Small flat brush. Morphe 443, which is one of my favorites. Go into... Uh, I kind of feel like doing something a little warm. So let's take a little bit of devilish. And we we'll to start building that into the crease. Because I like these two colors together. I think they look good together. Toilet paper, all that, like the meat sections constantly wiped out, bread, eggs. Not like bread eaters in this house, like we usually stick to keto just because of everything that's going on, like keto's out the window, man. We're just eating whatever. Because a lot of the stuff that keeps a long time, dry goods aren't keto friendly, like beans, rice, that kind of thing, which we've been eating a lot of. Thankfully, a lot of my local restaurants are doing takeout and staying open as much as they can as far as doing takeout. My favorite Mexican restaurant. El Paso. Hey girl, hey. My friend works there. Anyway, uh, they put in a drive through So I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> so we hit up their drive through the other night. Because I mean, I want to support local businesses where I can. And that's one of my favorite restaurants. And the staff is so great. I, I love the food there. So that was really cool getting to just go <laughs> through a drive through and get our favorite thing. <laughs> my, I got the flautas today. Or this time. I usually get tamales or taco salad if I'm being good and keto. I was like, dude, I just want some flautas and some rice and beans. That's all I've been eating is rice and beans and junk food. Then I bought a lot of junk food. I'm basically eating kind of how I ate in my early 20s. Cheap, poor people food. That's what I would call it. Like uh, ramen noodle type of things. Stuff that's cheap and will last forever. That was the kind of thing I used to eat when I was in my early 20s and had like no money. Also, the like going low on toilet paper and being conservative reminds me of my early 20s when I was completely broke and have had to resort to using napkins and other things sometimes. But uh, yeah, we did luckily, I found like packs of wipes and stuff. So we'll be okay. <laughs> and we are being conservative with our toilet paper for sure. Limiting <laughs> the amount we use when we do use. Even though the toilet paper is on the shelves, I don't want to go like buy it if somebody else needs it more than me. Because I'll be all right. You know? I love the shade Devilish. I think that's such a pretty cool. But yeah, and if you did watch my last vlog, you know, towards the end, I started talking about some other stuff going on. I'm going back in June. So my dad was diagnosed with colon cancer last week, or week four last, and his surgery was postponed. It was supposed to be so they postponed it till next Saturday, or I mean next Friday. Thing going on, and they didn't want to risk him getting COVID or something. What is it? I got like a little whelp popping up on my cheek here. 
a little hive. I don't know what that's about, but it itches and I can kind of see it. Seasonal allergies are kicking off. We had our lawn done today. The neighbors are doing their yard today. Someone else is mowing earlier this morning. <laughs> I promise if I'm sounding froggy right now, it is purely allergies. But yeah, I haven't gone in a public place though in almost two weeks. I think I've ran to the store. We're looking for the toilet paper. And I've put on makeup like once or twice because I was filming something else. Okay, let's move on to the lid and do something there. I'm gonna take this smaller brush. This is a Morphe 456. I'm gonna take uh, Privacy, which is the darkest brown. I'm starting a new series on my channel. Oh yeah, I'm taking Privacy on the outer corner also. But I'm starting a new series. It is the Declutter Cleaning Series. It's probably gonna last a whole year because it's that much. And I'm probably only gonna put a video up maybe every week or every two weeks part of the series, even though I'm gonna be like consistently getting this done way sooner than the videos are going up, obviously. <laughs> but trust me, it's not taking me an entire year to do this big clean. It's just I'm spacing the videos out so we don't get burnt out on them. So far completed my closet and I'm also doing a capsule wardrobe that's incredibly inspired by the Anna edit. That is someone I have been binge watching lately. I don't know why her videos make me feel good and I've just been enjoying them. So uh, we are working on that. Well, I finished the closet, got the capsule wardrobe sorted, organized jewelry, the whole shebang is getting organized and clean. Like, I don't think my bedroom's ever been this clean. I'm not quite finished. There's some things, more cosmetic things I wanna work on before I show the, like, the big reveal or anything, but I am gonna be doing the big bathroom clean out video. It's all filmed. I just need to do like some final shots of everything finished and the same situation with the closet. But I've been kind of working my little butt off on that kind of stuff and just, I found it to be an incredibly good distraction because A, it's something I can control and affect <laughs> and make better and make myself feel better with. It, you know, it might be a little bit of a anxiety thing, finding the comfort in sorting things and organizing them because it's a control thing. Like I totally know that's what it's related to because there's so much going on, not just with the COVID, but with my, you know, worrying about my dad and stuff. It's it's something I can focus on and is in my hands kind of thing and I can fix it. Purely why I'm worry, working with, I guess, doing that, even though I had this on the books to do, I was planning to do this video series this spring anyway. And I don't know, this kind of just gave me a little bit more of a kick in the butt to get started on because I needed something to focus on like that. Because I was having a hard time focusing on videos because it just felt so meaningless, <laughs> honest. It really did. Like, I just couldn't care less last week about editing makeup videos and talking about makeup. I still kind of feel that way a little bit. Makeup's also my meditation and my escape, and I just need to refine that as well. I remember why I love it so much. I was kind of soured on doing anything like that last week, and that's a little bit out of my normal state. Usually this is like the only thing I really enjoy doing a lot of times and want to do because it makes me feel better. I'm going to take a little bit of devilish on this little tiny M562 M562 and just blend that in the crease a little more. So yeah, that's basically what's up right now. We just, I'm most of the way through watching Tiger King. What the fuck is that? I, where did, these are real people. These are real people. Jesus Christ. That show and the memes. The memes have been pure gold. I'll insert my favorite one here. <laughs> Because I've been dying laughing at the memes. And there was parts of that show that are absolutely heartbreaking with the animals and stuff, obviously. And I didn't want to watch it because of that. Because I, I can't with the animal abuse stuff. It, it kills me. But I I powered through it. And there are some parts of that show that I full on laughed out loud. I had to call my husband in to come watch because I was laughing so hard. He's like, what is going on? It was mostly the music videos from Joe Exotic that were getting... And, but I mean, the, this show will put you through so many emotions. Like, you don't know who you want to even root for in this situation. Like, nobody. They're all pieces of shit, really. Like, I don't think there are any, like, good people in this bunch. I think Joe might be better into of them, but damn. Some of these people are awful, awful humans. They're just very flawed humans. Let's put that one. But yeah, some of them are total pieces of shit, though. And some of them, I, I really do feel sorry for some of the employees. Like, I don't know. They kind of get you in the feels because you can tell. It's their lives, you know. I love this blend of these colors. I think it looks so pretty. I hope it's reading on camera as it is to me, to my eyeballs. Um, let's take a flat brush here. And I'm going to go into... I'm going to take turn on first. I'm going to put this on the inner part. Okay, now I'm going to take ambitious and put that kind of on the middle. No, ma'am. Don't bark at the motorcycle. The only thing about drinking coffee while you film is that you constantly have to give him pee. I'm at right now. I'm like, turn on. Oh, let me finish my eyes before I go. I have to get up. Oh, I love this color. I love this color. God, my hair looks so weird in the viewfinder. It, just, it looks better down. It's just, I've got some root 
things going on. We'll, it'll get sorted. Man, ambitious. Ambitious is a beautiful shade. I really, really enjoy it. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of drunk dial. Just pop it on this outer part. Just a little bit. I like drunk dial too. I think that's it. one of my favorites in the palette thus far. I do have a little bit of fallout. It's not terrible, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean that up. Yeah, let's put a little bit of liner on the upper lash line. I think I'm gonna use this new one from Mosquito that I got the other day. It's an NPR. This is the brown shade. I'm gonna use it. I'm just gonna run that along the upper lash line. I don't feel like doing a wing or anything. Okay, just prime my under eyes real quick with a little bit of concealer. And now let's go ahead into this 456, and I'm gonna take Devilish again. I'm just gonna go straight in with it along this lower lash line. I'm gonna get kind of one side of the brush and then tilt upwards and then blend it along. So the thing I've noticed is that my face looks so red in, with this camera. I think I'm able to get much more close, tight shots of doing the eyeshadow, which I really like. And I'm gonna take a fluffier brush and just kind of blend that a little bit. On this little Morphe 152, we're gonna take Privacy and really add some depth right out here. And with that little flat brush we used a while ago, I'm gonna take some Ambitious, pop it in the center. Oh, that looks really good on the lower lash line. Yeah, I really do like that shade. I'm gonna take a little bit of turn on on the inner part and kind of inner corner a little bit. I think this is basically that is done. I'll probably put on some mascara in a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to face now. And now for foundation, I have something new to play with. It is the number seven Protect and Perfect Advanced All in One Foundation, hydrating and age defying with SPF 50. Suitable for, suitable for sensitive skin. Yes, I, I'm in love with this foundation, by the way, and I love to apply it with my fingers. I've never been somebody that likes to do foundation with fingers. It's become a thing with this one product. I really like it. So let's take a little bit on the back of my hand and pop it on. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. We'll be right back. All right, a new concealer that I am playing with right now is the Born to Glow from NYX. I just got this one the other day too. And so far, I'm really liking it. I think it's pretty good. It reminds me a little bit of like Maybelline Age Rewind. Just a little bit. It has a good shade range to me. So I'm just gonna take a little, not a huge amount under the eye and just kind of pop it on. I have like a love-hate with this applicator. Like I like the way it feels, but also it's kind of gross. So I'm taking a little, just as a little dry sponge and just uh, blending that in. It really does remind me of Adrian Wine, the more I think about it. See, the drugstore's been killing it with the uh, foundations and concealers lately, man. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and set all this down with, uh, I think I'll use the Maybelline Fit Me under my eyes just because it's a favorite. And I'm gonna apply it with a brush because we are just all about doing things a little different around here lately. I'm just gonna take this little e.l.f. tapered brush. This is a blush brush, technically. I'm just gonna pat it on. I'm not gonna bake or overly set. I'm just like normal setting, I guess you could say. Just making sure everything's set, but I'm not like piling on the product to bake. Now on the rest of the face, I'm gonna use the number seven powder, which I believe is supposed to be a dupe of the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Airbrush Powder. This is the number seven triple action translucent finishing powder. Lift and illuminate. I got it in the shade light. I love the packaging, even though it gets fingerprints, it's still pretty. And this is what the product looks like. So I take this on a Elf Flaws face brush. Work it in on the rest of the face. I think this is such a pretty powder. I believe I've never like tried anything from number seven until recently. And I am enjoying what I have tried. I need I want to try some of their skincare. Okay, and for blush, I don't really have anything new for blush to use. So I think I'm gonna use the Rose T Rose from Milani. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna do my highlighter first. I forgot. For highlighter, I'm gonna use this NYX Duo Duo Chromatic one in Snow Rose. I kind of forgot I had this one, so I, I want to revisit. I think it's a little too pink for what we're going for because the eyes are kind of warm. So yeah, maybe we won't use that one. I think we'll just use the uh, Hello Halo highlighter. I'm just gonna dip into both shades. Highlight my hive. Yep, that's cool. I'm trying to think, what else have we not discussed yet? I think we've kind of covered the basics of everything crappy that's going on lately. I'm taking just a little bit of the lightest color, dabbing it right here. Yeah, this has been a nice little mental break though, right here. Even though I'm talking about stuff and kind of fussing about it, whatever, it, it's been a, I'm still like focusing on makeup, so it's, it's a nice little break. I'm taking a little bit of that lightest shade, the highlighting palette, and just hit that inner corner just for some cohesiveness. Now I'm gonna go back in with my T-Rose blush. If I can get over. I'm just gonna use this to blend the highlighter. Yeah, I have a dresser to paint though that's coming in here, so I haven't touched this room yet as far as organizing. But I've actually started on my office, got the closet down in there. 
Got a lot done. A little bee during this quarantine. <laughs> I've not been wasting time. Like I made myself chill out last night and stop and sit down and watch uh, Joe Exotic, Tiger King. Turn my brain off a little bit, watch TV and quit worrying about where things need to go, whatever. Okay, and for lips, I have a couple of new things. I have the three lips from the from the Cherry Collection from Urban Decay. And I picked up a few new products from Wet n Wild. I found these on clearance the other day. I was like, are they discontinued in some of these? Are they just gonna like repackage or what? I'm talking about the uh, liquid suede. I picked up uh, three shades I found in the clearance rack. So we got Goth Topic, which I didn't have. I think I had it previously, but it dried out because it was one of the first ones I ever got. I also got New Deeper 2D. I think with certain looks, this will look okay. Not for today. And I also got uh, the High Shine one, Caught You Bare Naked. So I think these are pretty, but they are going to require a very specific look because they kind of look like concealer lips on me. I think I'm going to use Goth Topic today. We're going to top it with uh, maybe Devilish Metallic. Just a little bit of it in the center of the lip. Mm. Is that what we want to do? Let's try on Hot Topic, or Goth Topic, and see how it looks. Yeah, it's not really the tone that I'm going for. Mm -mm. Nope, nope, nope. So I'm going my lips with this little NYX lip liner. I usually keep this in my purse. I don't know why it's But this is the shade Peekaboo Neutral. Or Nude, one of the two. And she's a very, like, your lip color. Your lips, but better shade. She is down to a nub in because it's obviously a shade I like. Yeah, so I just wanted the lips to be kind of neutral because I do want to use the Juicy lip shade, which is kind of metallic, but it's not like overly metallic. It's a very wearable metallic lipstick. It's just such a beautiful color. It's like this, kind of looks like a nudie peach shade, but it has a pink shift in it. It's just so pretty. I guess it's definitely a favorite in this collection. Like, I mean, look how pretty that is. Like, I love that. That's such a juicy shade. It feels really good on lips as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and do some mascara now. I have a new mascara to use. Finally, yeah, I've got Lash Princess. So we're gonna curl my mess, curl my lashes, and then we apply a little mascara here. I do, I like the wand on this. It's very long and skinny. I think it's pretty. Ah, uh, yeah, this mascara is amazing. Hell yeah, fantastic essence. Good job. I'm gonna try more of these. I like the rubbery kind of grippy parts on here too. That's cute. Looks like a little corset. That's very cute. I I don't love the shade of green, but cute packaging. Yeah, this is the makeup look mostly done. I'm going to go judge my hair and we'll be right back. Okay, and our look is finished. The hair is judged. Everything is complete for nowhere to go. But we are doing a foundation wear test today, so I do have things to do. And film a little bit more footage of the Great Clean Out series. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today and just listening to me ramble and kind of gripe a little bit. And just... A little bit of a uh, cathartic chit chat therapy, if you will. I find that very uh, talking to the camera and sitting down and playing with makeup is a very therapeutic and kind of cathartic experience. Like I, I'd love to do this, and uh, it makes me feel good and kind of get stuff off my chest a little bit. And it always feels good to sit down and just really talk about what how I'm feeling and all that, and playing some makeup. I know my hair needs a little toning right now. We do have our little blonde streak in the front still. It's just a uh, I need to put a little lavender toner on there and get her back to her <laughs> nice color. I washed it today and I anti-brass stuff in and boy did we get brassy. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much for hanging out with me today and don't forget to like and subscribe, comment down below. How are you uh, holding up? Just, yeah, how are you holding up out there? Let me know in the comments and we'll chit chat about it and I'm always here to talk if you need it. Just need somebody to open up to, whatever. I think this is a good time to really focus on some self-care uh, and maybe clean clean house. It makes me feel good. Maybe it'll make you guys feel good too. Yeah, do some face masks and relax. Watch some shows on Netflix and some mindless entertainment and just let your brain chill. And also remember you can laugh. Even though shitty stuff's going on, you can still smile and laugh and make you feel, make yourself happy despite everything else. I read that uh, laughter boosts your immune system, so let's, let's all just have a laugh at some memes and some weird shows on Netflix. But that is all for today. Stay spooky, stay safe, and stay the fuck at home. I'll see y'all the next one. Bye now.